One of the biggest questions I still have for Fallout 76 are on story details. What exactly are we going to be doing in this game outside of just PvPing or taking down monsters or even setting up settlements? Well, some answers to that question have been given by Bethesda. If you guys don't know, in Fallout 76, there will be no human NPCs. If you played through Fallout 4, most of the quests involve interacting with another human NPC, either to just get the quest or even along the way. Now, in place of human NPCs that will give you quests or interact with you, you're actually going to have other players around the map that you will be able to interact with in many different ways, some friendly and some of course not. Well fairly recently Bethesda actually uploaded a video on their Twitter more or less going over how quests are going to fundamentally work in Fallout 76. Of course there's not going to be a human giving you these quests anymore, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have quests. Our quests are given out largely through holotapes, notes, terminals. So no holotapes and terminals, that's something we've heard of before. In other interviews, they actually talk about how also robots are going to play a major role in the story and they'll be one of the major people giving you quests. And even though at first you might be like, oh, that seems like it's not going to be a ton of fun, using robots, terminals, or even just holotapes is something we've actually seen quite a few times throughout the Fallout franchise. So I actually looked back at some of those instances from Fallout 4 and looked at how successful or unsuccessful that was. Did it really show that you're not interacting with other human NPCs is putting a major kind of stoppage on that quest, making it not nearly as fun. The short answer is no, not really. Two of the major ones I actually just played in preparation for this video were Cambridge Polymer Labs. If you guys don't know, when you actually explore or enter into Cambridge Polymer Labs, you're going to be prompted with a quest. Everyone in that lab has long since passed, but what they're trying to do is actually create this custom piece of paint for power armor. After you actually enter into the lab, you then find out that you're locked in, that they were actually doing mandatory overtime, so you can't leave unless you actually figure this thing out or find an alternate way. The backstory of this quest is given out almost exclusively throughout the terminals you find in Cambridge Polymer Labs. Even just the robot you interact with gives you very little information outside of the fact that, hey, yeah, you're locked in. And yet for me, it was still one of my most memorable quests in Fallout 4 because one, you get a totally unique piece of power armor, and you really did have quite a few different choices. If you just wanted to figure out a way out of this place without trying to figure out the chemical combination, but maybe you were a pacifist and you just wanted to go the traditional route, you also could do that, or even both of those. Another one that's pretty notable is General Atomics Galleria. This one involves predominantly robots, but it's not as terminal heavy. This one's more just actually interacting with the robots exclusively. They're not human NPCs, and you could definitely tell that by the way they talk. They definitely have like a simpler form of speech almost, but at the same time, depending on how you finish things with this quest, depending on what other items you've actually found in the world, you'll have different options, also based on your dialogue, and still is a lot of fun. It definitely holds up to a lot of the other quests in Fallout 4, even if this one's quite a bit shorter. In that same little clip, Jeff Gardner actually goes on to explain more about Fallout 76's story, and I think that gives us a decent idea how we can experience it. Um, and the story's very organic. It's the story of the survivors that went out before you the first 25 years after the bombs dropped. So you'll engage in their story. We added a lot of holotapes to this game. You'll hear a lot of audio. You will, of course, be able to, it, so the, the story is actually rich in a way because you'll be able to hear it as you continue to quest along um, and, and enjoy the experience in a way we haven't done before. So finding out about the rich backstory of many people before the war is something we've also seen throughout many fallouts. There are seemingly endless possibilities here. In previous interviews, I think we've actually heard that one of the initial or main story quests is actually given to you by the overseer. So maybe it's like a simple prompt such as, oh, go to this location and try and rebuild since that is kind of your job as being one of the control vaults. But as you traverse and actually get to that location, you'll realize there's something going on there and the story does largely begin. One of my favorite quests and many people's favorite quest from Fallout 4 that isn't even so much of a real quest but more of a location to explore is actually based in the same concept. Dunwick Borers is probably one of the most interesting places in Fallout 4. I actually made a full video on this and I'll have it linked in little i right now. I would definitely recommend watching it because it's a cool experience but the standout part about this location even though there were a bunch of human NPCs you never actually learn anything from them. It's just raiders that have kind of moved into that area and you take them down as you progress and it does 
add a little bit to the fear factor, but you also experience a ton of ghouls and you actually go through terminal entries to find out the haunted backstory of this location. And yeah, there's legit ghosts going on here. So even though it's a fairly short clip and it doesn't give away a ton about Fallout 76's story, it obviously does give us a lot about how the story is going to play out. When you extrapolate that information given by Jeff Gardner on Fallout 76 and actually look at how they've used the same application method in Fallout 4 and even some of the past Fallouts, it honestly quells my worries quite a bit. I'm definitely not as fearful about the story being lacking. Now my main concern is how large the story is. I really hope they still dedicated a considerable amount of time to actually getting it to be quite expansive. If you yourself are interested in actually experiencing some of these quests, someone made a really cool and large post on Reddit showing all of the different quests from different Fallouts, not just Fallout 4. So you could either A, watch a YouTube video on them, or Corp is actually a great channel that actually has a lot of these types of videos. Or alternatively, just go download one of those games or even use it in Fallout 4 and experience some of them for yourself. And I think you'll quickly realize that not having human NPCs isn't as big of a roadblock as you initially thought. One other thing that's not really given away here, but that I think Todd Howard touched on in another interview is actually they're really going to be exploring some of the mythology and lore behind West Virginia itself. That seems like something that would be very side questy, so I imagine that's where we'll see it. But even just now, we know Mothman is confirmed to be in the game, which is a very large part of West Virginian folklore. And if you've ever even been around that region, you've probably heard of it. Either way, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank all of you for watching. But of course, before we end things off, we do have today's psychology fun fact of the day sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp's a website that allows you to get connected with a counselor at a great low price, as well as everything can be done totally online. They have literally thousands of counselors to choose from to address any of your mental health needs. And if you do feel like you have a problem, you should address it immediately. At the top of the description down below, you can find a link to where you can sign up. And actually, honestly, just on the topic of therapy, something that I feel like not a ton of people realize is that therapy in psychology isn't just kind of fixing things, or it doesn't have to just be fixing things. Some people want it to be that way. So let's say you're having really bad anxiety. So you speak to a therapist, hopefully get that anxiety taken care of, and you could live on your normal life. But over the past however many years, let's say 10 years, that's just the arbitrary number, there's been a fairly large shift towards something called positive psychology. Positive psychology is the idea that, all right, let's say you are having that same anxiety problem, rather than just fixing that problem and actually getting you to a neutral standpoint, assuming you started at a negative standpoint, therapy will typically continue and attempt to get you to a positive standpoint to actually show you not just methods to address that individual problem, but also just to live a healthier, happier life, almost like preventative measures in bad things occurring in your life. In other words, what I'm trying to say is therapy is not just for those who are severely depressed or have really bad anxiety. There's a lot of people that would benefit from it that live largely happy and normal lives. It just makes your life a bit better. One of the definitions I was taught for psychotherapy in one of my earlier psych classes was actually simply conversation with a purpose. Either way, it's pretty going to wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time. Later.